Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. This is my second attempt now to record this uh, this video. So today, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, it's my third day in my 100 day transformational challenge. I'm basically trying, well, my goal is to lose 45 kilograms to reach my ideal weight uh, where I could sort of start recovering my health and stuff like that. Uh, and as you know, as I've said before many times in previous videos, um, health is one of the most important assets that you have in this life, other than time, of course. Uh, you know, you lose money, you've lost nothing, but you lose your health, you lost everything, you lose your time, you lose everything. You can't, you can't recover back. Uh, you know, once you're gone, that's it. It's game over. But as long as you're still in the game, still alive, you still have an opportunity to to change irrespective of your age or or you know the situation that you're in but yes yeah, so i had to take some time off now to to really put in uh, a strategy to get my health back so i'm trying to balance my work life um, you know stuff at the same time um, i run a consultancy business small consultancy business uh, from the Isle of Man so uh, something I have to do otherwise it's gonna have a detrimental effect on my my work my business and life in general so I have to get some sort of a plan in place as you probably understand for anyone that's uh, suffering from any health issues and stuff like that and the key here is not to to play a victim and submit to your to your challenge uh, you know have any health issues and so on not to submit to it and surrender uh, is to fight back you know so if anyone out there you know you've got diabetes or you know something from obesity or you know obese related issues uh, you know don't make that an excuse don't play you know get on your you know your backside and, and do something about it uh, that's that's what I should tell you and uh, I'm trying to do the same myself it's not, it's not my first time I'm making this attempt. I've, I've had an attempt of doing a 100 day transformation uh, back in 2021 and I did manage to succeed. Uh, although it was for a very short period of time, I did drop a huge amount of weight. Uh, I think it was about 30 or 40 kg. I have to check my record at the time, but I did lose uh, you know, a huge amount of, of weight fat and I did gain muscle mass at the time uh, and it was going great for a while for you know a few months and then you know I started binge eating again I started uh, you know especially when you get invited to to events and or you, you know you, you go meet family and friends and so on and they they're not really into this health lifestyle and you start again getting this uh, you know sugar addiction and uh, you know, getting back into like high carbs diet, you know, high carb eating, uh, it does have a detrimental effect on you. Eventually, you get into this vicious cycle. You start putting on weight very quickly, and that's what happened to me yeah, after two years. Uh, now, in 2023, yeah, I put in quite a lot, a lot of weight. Uh, my, I haven't weighed myself this morning. Uh, my, my, my goal is always to just, you know, get out there and just walk and uh, you know get things done rather than actually weighing but at some point uh, possibly after 10 days of doing this I'm gonna weigh myself and then see where where I where I stand weight wise um, so inshallah that's that's my that's my plan here so uh, yeah but for now today I'm just gonna walk from Castle Town all the way to Port Erin that's going to take me about, about 90 minutes maybe and then I'll walk back inshallah as you can see you can have a quick look at the, the environment here in our location it's pretty, pretty beautiful and the fast cars come by very quickly it's a bit I feel sometimes it's a bit dangerous especially you know you got cars that drive extremely fast you know they always get this uh, idea in my mind if I can't just you know go, go onto the pavement you would take me out straight away yeah but uh, 
going outside, I mean it's a very beautiful day as you can see still early morning so you know, cloudy as always at uh, this time of the year yeah definitely something that we need to put right here so yesterday uh, like I said my, my goal is to walk 10 kilometers a day and I uh, alhamdulillah you know I was trying to walk you know aim much higher but I, I managed to walk about uh, 11 kilometers or just over 11 kilometers according to my tracker I don't know how accurate that is but, uh, I felt like I walked a lot longer uh, you know further than 11 kilometers but it was 11 so I'm gonna take take that as a fact um, and uh, yeah so today I'll see what, what my tracker would record and then inshallah once I do reach you know the 100 days I plan to I plan to make one video just to summarize my entire journey and these clips I'm recording now uh, it could be like a testament you know like a you know like to, to just basically show you how my you know my psychology is every day and uh, yeah I mean inshallah if I do record every day anyway so you can you can kind of see how my train of thoughts are going how you know my energy level and how it's like when you're fasting now it's like for three three days fasting uh, non-stop not one meal a day you know just completely prolonged fasting I still have energy I'm still moving around uh, in fact you know after about three four days maybe like tomorrow uh, you get this sudden surge of energy that comes into your body and in that that, the, the side effect, the, the negative side effect of that, so, yeah, really honestly, on that uh, is uh, you, you kind of you have too much energy, too much energy, you you have difficulty sleeping because you you constantly feel like you want to do something, you know, like maybe tidy the house or you know do some work, read a book, and that kind of stuff. So you have a lot, and your brain is constantly thinking about things. You start to you know reflect back on life and, and you kind of you know, you, you, you know your, your brain's kind of racy your thoughts are racy at the time so yeah so that, uh, something that's a, it's a bit of a challenge at that point because you know we need sleep you know the part of, part of being healthy we have to have a healthy uh, uh, period of sleeping you know uh, so yeah it's just it's a bit difficult to, to sleep at that point and uh, I already have difficulty sleeping anyway, so it, get, it becomes even more difficult um, at night just to get sleep. But yeah, inshallah, may Allah help me with this. And uh, I, I only have one request for everybody just to keep me in their, in their prayers. Um, I don't want to, you know, complain about certain things I have, in, you know, challenges in life. But I like to always keep that, you know anonymous between me and Allah and, and only Allah the one that helps me out in all difficult situations alhamdulillah and uh, yeah but, but all I ask for is to keep me in your prayers and uh, anyone else you know just in a similar situation whether it's health or whatever do something you know meet your luck halfway basically yeah so uh, yeah you do you take action and you leave the rest to the Creator, uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, and uh, yeah, only only He gives success or failure uh, by His will. Always remember that. But it doesn't it doesn't come for free. You have to take some sort of action. You can't sit at home and uh, or or just wait or just pray. You know, and uh, without taking any form of action, yeah. So that, that's a that's a, that's a, it's a big thing, and unfortunately, um, I've had lots of heated discussions with uh, Muslims uh, who who basically just say, "Well, if Allah wanted me to be this, or Allah wanted me to have this, He would have gave it to me, or whatever." And it's not written for me. That's complete nonsense. You know, you you can't submit to that. You have to. You go out there, take action, do something, and uh, leave the rest to Allah. And just say Alhamdulillah for whatever comes your way. You know, if you 
if you aim, if you need to like, you know, for, for, for like to buy a property, let's say you need, you know, half a million pounds or something, and that's what you're trying to, to raise through halal means, of course, working and you know, setting up a business and that kind of stuff. And uh, you don't achieve that, you achieve, let's say, quarter of a million for some reason, a uh, quarter of the amount. Just say alhamdulillah, it's not written for you, but as long as you try, you know, that's, that's what it is. Allah has, Allah has a plan for you. And maybe, maybe the situation or the difficult situation that you're in, you might find other options or other doors, you know. Maybe it's not good for you. Maybe so many things, Allah A'lam. But you should never give up. You at least try and pivot all the time. Always be flexible. Uh, some people I've met, they could be working on something and uh, or they're in a job. It's a dead-end job, it's not going anywhere, it's killing them slowly basically and they continue doing that, doing that. they don't try to improve their life, they don't try to seek any education or reskilling, they kind of like, you know, they work away to the, to the, to the grave basically and they don't think in that way, they say well, you know, this is the job that I got, well, 30 years ago and it's the job that I'm going to be in until I die basically that's, that's their mentality um, and if Allah wanted me to have a different job or have a different skill set he would have gave it to me it doesn't work that way you have to go out there and you have to make a change and uh, yeah unfortunately a lot of people are deluded then they're, they're not really aware of these facts and uh, yeah if you want to make a difference in your life you have to make a change it's even small incremental change uh, just uh, I don't like to use myself as a but just what I'm trying to do right now I'm not making a huge huge big uh, change I'm, all I'm trying to do is I'm trying to set a simple simple goal you know I'm just walking 10 kilometers a day or 20 kilometers and then trying to stick to it something small and uh, yeah inshallah that's what I work with and also to boost my my results I'm doing fasting I'm also trying to get back into having cold showers again uh, there's a lot of benefits to fasting a lot of benefits to walking and huge amounts of benefits from, from, from cold showers uh, and then you'll find so many so many videos on YouTube so much literature so much research so many papers on the internet um, that talk about all these benefits of these activities I've mentioned so I don't want to take up too much of your time in uh, basically just going over all these different uh, strategies. Yeah, definitely, definitely something that we should be doing. Um, what I'm thinking of doing now is maybe recording part of the journey for you guys, so you can at least enjoy the scenery because you can't really appreciate the Isle of Man. It is extremely, extremely beautiful. It's extremely. Uh, beautiful place to be in and uh, yeah if anyone reaches that level now in the video and, and uh, you know I'd like to tell you you know if you do consider relocating you know the whole land all this all this planet the whole universe belongs to Allah you know uh, so if you feel uncomfortable in whichever country you're in right now or whatever city or whatever um, I think you should consider coming to the island man it is peaceful people here are completely completely decent uh, mashallah you know you will see a, although they they are non-muslims i'm not saying they believe in allah they believe in a creator a lot of them are atheists or christians or they claim to be christians okay however they behave very much like muslims more than the muslims you will see you see islam the real islam here in this country and uh, just one simple example um, there was once I was you know I wanted to print a contract I had a contract with a client and I ran out of paper so I went to the shops you know local supermarkets uh, or local shops around my my home here in the Isle of Man and uh, they didn't have any any stock of paper you know like uh, printing paper so you know the, the cashier he, he said oh just just wait here I'll go into my office and she went into the office 
you know, the shop's office, and she got, grabbed a stack of uh, printer paper from her, from you know, the office printer in, in the shop, and she just gave it to me. And I said, "Well, let, let me buy the, the stack from you." And she said, "No, no, no, not at all. You know, we're here for each other, and that kind of thing." So, and that is very. That is what Islam is all about. That we should have unity. We should care about each other. We should be serving each other. Uh, always helping each other out and that kind of stuff. And you know, Subhanallah, I haven't seen that in any any place I've been to where there is predominantly uh, you know a large Muslim community. They don't stick together. Uh, when I when I first came to the Isle of Man, I was looking for accommodation. I wanted to rent a place and. You know, I was going to estate agents. I was going, for, and it's very, it's very difficult. That's that's the challenge with the island man. There's not a lot of properties around, so things get sold pretty quickly. There's high competition when you try to bid on a property. And uh, so I was asking people, uh, brothers in the mosques and that kind of stuff. And uh, you know, one brother, a smart ass, basically. Oh, you know, if you want, if you want to rent a property, there's plenty of rob properties in the estate agents. Well, I mean, obviously. I know that already, you know, it's not like I, I landed from a, from a banana boat um, and I, I've been in the UK, I've travelled to you know, well over 30 countries now, alhamdulillah, so I, I'm well acquainted with how things work and how, you know, when, when I had to rent property and stuff. But he's telling me that, that he stayed in the office, instead of saying, well, you know, inshallah brother, I, you know, if I know another brother that owns a property and he's got, they just could be like that. And then another brother, Obviously, I wanted to start a business and I wanted to, uh, an office and that kind of stuff. He had an office, you know, a spare desk. So, and I said to him, brother, you know, we're pretty much in the same business. You know, you're in IT and I'm in IT. Let's combine forces. Let's work together. You know, I put my investments, instead of me going out there renting, you know, an office, spending X amount of money, and you're renting here and, you know, that kind of stuff. Let's, let's combine forces, you know, let's work together. And he said, oh, brother, I need to speak to my wife. So he went and spoke to his wife. And then he kind of like started to avoid me for some reason. You know, as if I was asking, I was begging him for money. I'm not begging him for money. I was saying to him, you know, it's, it makes common sense in the synergy between us. So let us, let us just basically combine together, come stronger. So one company, work together, uh, you know, have one office. Uh, you know, you can specialize in a certain sector and I can specialize in another sector. So let's just work together and build a bigger company and inshallah and then we can build a Sadaqa Jari. And I told him about all my plans for, for Yumacom, my, my brand and stuff. Unfortunately, he, he, he ran away and it is just, it's not just him, um, but there's other brothers as well. And I said, SubhanAllah, it's completely different than when I used to um, open my house even uh, there, were, there were points where I would see people Muslims or non-Muslims um, you know who are sleeping rough in the street and I would you know basically give them a place to stay for the night I tried to help them I tried to speak to my friends that own maybe like restaurants or something and I say well do you you know maybe you can give this brother um, you know like a job maybe he can, he can wash he can, he can do something you can give him something you know uh, just to get him, to get him, you know, to get him by, you know, basically, in a different city. So I, I, I was concerned and about them, and I don't want to talk about myself, but I, I believe that as Muslims, we should be like that. We should be focusing on other people, not on ourselves. You know, if you, if you focus on serving others, that is how you attain greatness, and this is why I believe, you know service to many leads to greatness and uh, if we if we start doing that believe me you know the, the uh, Islam will shine and people will be coming into Islam in droves because it's, it's not your words that you say it's, it's your actions you know and, uh, Alhamdulillah I had uh, a speak when I was into Dawah and uh, uh, a few brothers did Alhamdulillah uh, you know revert to Islam Many locals from many places I've visited, predominantly in Scotland. So it, and it's all because of the actions, situations. You make friends first. You know, you treat them nice. 
you respect them, you give them, you know, the benefit of the doubt, whatever they say, uh, even if they said something offensive, you know, in, in, because they don't know any better. Yeah, I mean, they're, being, they're being brainwashed and or brain trashed from the media and they have their own agenda. So we should always give people the benefit of doubt, make friends, uh, unite under humanity. Basically, you know, we all we all originated from Adam, the same father and mother. It's all one family. Give them the benefit of doubt because they're ignorant and they still learning. So teach them in a nice way. Teach them through your actions. And once you do that, you will see the difference. And of course, I'm not saying that everybody that receives a message or recognizes that Islam is the religion of all the prophets from Adam all the way to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's right. I don't think that's fair. I don't think that's just. Uh, I think you know we should be doing this or doing that. And I'm thinking, who are you to? <laughs> and this is coming from Muslims. You know, Muslims who are arguing against you know the commandments of Allah. So I push you. It's a sad situation that we're in, and uh, it's due to obviously the bad parenting, uh, the bad culture. There's a lot of things, negative things that go around, brainwashing and people believe everything they see on the on the TV. Um, so yeah, it does have less impact, of course, naturally. Um, so what we need we, we need to really come back, unite, go back to the original source, the Quran, the Sunnah, the Prophet. Um, I'm saying this to myself at the same time. This is something that I need to work on myself as well. And I'm trying to do that as well for myself. I'm not perfect Muslim, but whatever it says, whatever Allah says, and I can verify, you know, this, this is a message from the Quran. I know it's from the Quran, the book of the Vedan, word of God. So I, I follow it to the best of my ability. And if I break a rule, because no one's perfect, at least I would recognize it is. You know, I've made a sin or I've, I've, I've done something wrong and I need to seek repentance from Allah. And, uh, unfortunately, a lot of other people, they, uh, I, I, sad to say, but they would just take it for granted. They'll say, well, I haven't done anything wrong and they argue against their case and you tell them, clearly, this goes against the, the commandment. And they will say, oh, there's a lot of worse people or they, you know, I don't believe that everything you know, Allah creates us to go to hell and all that nonsense. Right? So, Allah's the judge, He judges, He created heaven and hell, and it's part of the belief that you know, there is heaven and hell. Um, so, it's hard to say that uh, you know, Allah's not going to punish anyone and everyone's going to go to heaven. And uh, this life is just about having a nice time. Clearly it says in the Quran, you know, we created the jinn, mankind, 
others almost instead of you. You know, you help, you solve someone else's problems. Then this is Allah, Allah will start solving your problems. And then that's how, that's how the, the whole system works. Pay it forward, you know. You have to contribute. And then it's Allah. about all the, the facts and the, the signs around you. I mean, all we have to do is just look at the nature, look at the birds, you know, uh, look at the birds around you, just see, see things as they are, see, see the world, look at this whole world, look at the beauty of this world. There's chicken there. Anyone wants some halal chicken? There you go. Some halal chicken here. Allah. We need to go out 
gives you this uh, this uh, opportunity of appreciating the conservation. You know, look at the birds how it flaps its wings. You know, look at look at all this. Look at the horizon. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna cut off here for now for today, inshallah. And uh, hopefully, with the will of Allah, Allah gives me strength and ability to continue on that journey of a 100-day transformation um, and to document as much as I can, as, uh, you know, my thoughts, my ideas, my my opinions about certain things, my findings. And, uh, yeah, and uh, do forgive me if I if I if I don't achieve to document every day because I also have business to run I have to also you know catch up on my my studies I'm working on a PhD as well so I have to you know spend some time doing a lot of reading a lot of you know, writing documenting things as well uh, researching coding to, there's a lot of stuff that we need to do as well uh, but I'm gonna have to get my health back I have to get my weight down to you know, an ideal weight so my body can function correctly, my brain can function better. Um, yeah, so that's, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to just basically uh, end my life. So in a way, it's a bit like uh, it's a bit like suicide in a way. If you, if you carry on, you know, leading a very stressful, unhealthy life. To me, it's a bit like suicide because, and I think Allah will ask us on that day of judgment. You know, I gave you health, and what do you do with it? And uh, you know, if you start saying, "Well, you know, I was, I was under a lot of stress, and I was eating a lot of pizza and takeaways and junk food and all that stuff," it's not an excuse. You know, there's a lot of uh, halal, pure, healthy alternatives. And you will also judge you how you treat your children. I mean, you start your children from a very young age eating uh, fried food and unhealthy food and, and sugar, giving them tea, you know, biscuits and chocolates, and getting them on that uh, sugar addiction at a very young age. You've destroyed their life, you know, you've really destroyed their life. Because they, kids don't know what's right or wrong. So as soon as you get them addicted to sugar, They'll be craving sugar all the time. They'll be like, Daddy, Daddy, I need some ice cream. I need some junk. You know, I need pizza. I need, you know, McDonald's and all that stuff, which harms the human. It destroys, it destroys your hormones. You know, you see all the situations that are going on with people that are cross-dressing and doing all that sick stuff going on in the world. And it's all because of that these hormones and genetically modified food. Ask about that, you know, the effects of side effects of cancers, all these other diseases that have just cropped up. It's all because this unhealthy food and uh, genetically modified stuff. So, you know, go back to the clean stuff as much as possible. Eat as healthy as possible because you will regret it in later years. You might not see the side effects immediately. You know, it's not going to have the same impacts, but it will affect you. Give it 10 years and you will see the effects and then you will, you will regret it. And then once things are gone, once you lose something, you lose a limb or you you have a problem with your organs or something and you have to be on constant medication and constant, uh, you know, medical treatments and that kind of stuff. And that's it. You can't, you can't get that back. You lose it. You, you That's it. If you don't use it, you lose it. So I, I think... We need to really focus on our health, focus on the time that we have in this life. Because no one knows how long we have, each individual. So do the best you can and be the best version of yourself. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Take care.